Hello beautiful people and how are you this lovely day? If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Eleftheria and I'm doing some free code count challenges. So far I have done like the, um, the flexbox, the grid, debugging and uh, the regex, but now it's time I think to move into something different and this is D3. So I'm going to do the challenges in D3. If you're not a new subscriber, but you actually follow me for some time now, then you know that I have done actually the projects for D3 and I will leave a link in the description box. So I think that these challenges won't be very hard for me because I've already done some things with D3 and individualization and D3 is one of my favorite uh, libraries and I think that you can do a lot of things. So I'm actually really excited that finally FreeCodeCamp has this chapter with D3 because before that it was only the projects. So if you didn't know D3 you had to go somewhere else to learn it and then turn back to do the projects. But now I think that uh, these challenges will be perfect and will help you a lot in order to do the projects. If you are into this kind of videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's start this video. So I'm going to the first lesson and let's see what we have. So it says add document elements with G3. G3 has several methods that let you add and change elements in your document. The select method selects one element from the document. It takes an argument uh, for the name of the element you want and returns an HTML node for the first element in the document that matches the name. And then we have an example. The example is with const, anchor and then d3.select and a. Most things will work like that, so you'll have the d3, then you'll have a dot and then you'll have a method. Here the method is select. Every time after a method you'll have a parenthesis. Okay, now let's continue. The above example finds the first anchor tag on the page and saves an HTML node for in the variable anchor. You can use the selection with, well, uh, with other methods. The G3 part of the example is a reference to the D3 object, which is how you access D3 methods. The two other useful methods are append and text and actually I think that we will use a lot of times these methods like select, append, maybe select all and a couple of other methods like enter, uh, you will see that are very usable in D3. So the append method takes an argument for the element you want to add to the document. It appends an HTML node to a selected item and returns a handle to that node. The text method either sets the text of the selected node or gets the current text. To set the value, you pass a string as an argument inside the parenthesis of a method. And then again, we have an example with select, append and text. So D3 allows you to, to chain several methods together with periods to perform a number of actions in a row. Use the select method to select the body tag in the document. The append an h1 tag to it and add the text learning D3 into the h1 element. Okay, so first I think that simply I'm going to uh, copy this one here and then we will go to the fourth uh, line and paste it. So first I'm going to fix the tabs here. It's not mandatory but I like to have everything like uh, clean and organized. Oops, sorry for that. We'll have the body and then we will have um, an H1 and then we'll have the learning D3. So learning G3. Okay, let's see if this one is correct. Yes, it wasn't very hard. So let's continue with the second one, which is select a group of elements with G3. G3 also has the select all method to select a group of elements. It returns an array of HTML nodes for all the items in the document that match the input string. And again, we have an example with select all 
and like the select method, select all supports method chaining and you can use it with other methods. Select all the lead tags in the document and change their text to list item by chaining the text method. All right, so I think that you will have like um like the same thing we had before, which was like D3 and then select all instead of select. Inside I'm going to have the, um, the Lee and then we will append probably the H1, right? Oops, I forgot the dot because we have to chain them. Um, and then I'm going to use the text and this time we will have something like list item so let's check this one and it is correct nice i like that so let's go to the third one work with data in d3 the d3 library focuses on a data driven approach when you have a set of data you can apply d3 methods to display it on the page data comes in many formats but this is challenge uses a simple array of numbers Okay, the first step is to make G3 aware of the data. The data method uh, is used on a selection of DOM elements to attach the data to those elements. The data set is passed as an argument to the method. And then we have the ender as far as I can see, it's a really important method. A common workflow pattern is to create a new element in the document for each piece of data in the set. G3 has an ender method for this purpose. When ender is combined with data, it looks at the selected elements from the page and compares them to the number of data items in the set. If there are fewer elements than data items, it creates the missing elements. Okay, here is an example. So we have this um, example here and it has a select, select all data with a parameter that is set to data set. And then we have ender, append and text. All right, let's see what we have to do. Select the body node, then select uh, H2 elements. Have D3 create and append an H2 tag for its item in the dataset array. The text in H2 should say a uh, new title. Your code should use the data and enter, mm -hmm, and enter methods. Okay, so I will copy these lines here. And I'm going to the sixth line. I'm going to paste them. And let's see what we have to do. All right, first I'm going to have a body. Okay, then I'm going to have an H2. The data, I think the data set is correct and enter, I guess it's correct. Now as far as append concerns, we will also have an H2 and probably for text I'm going to have something like a new title. Title, okay, that's correct. All right, let's see the result and once again we are correct. Yay, I like that. So let's do one more challenge because I don't want this video to get too long. And in the next video we will continue with more, I promise you that. So you have work with dynamic data in G3. Okay, the last two challenges cover the basics of displaying data dynamically with G3 using the data and enter methods. These methods take a data set and together with the append method create a new DOM element for each entry in the data set. In the previous challenge, you created a new H2 element for each time in the data set array, but they all contained the same text, like new title. This is because you have not made use <coughs> Sorry, you have not made um, use of the data that it binds to each of the H2 elements. The G3 text method can take a string or a callback function as an argument. So we have selection.text and then we have the D. Okay, let's see what we have to do. It like says change the text method so that each H2 element displays the corresponding value from the data set array with a single space and USD. For example, the first heading should be 12 USD. Okay, so I'm going to the 10th line and we have to append H2. Okay, so then we have text. This should be something like space and then USD 
but before that we have to add actually the D I'm going to have a D and then equal and the symbol and I think that I also need to have a new uh, bracket yes and in this bracket I'm going to have a D plus so I have to close also this not bracket parenthesis sorry okay now maybe it's correct and yes it is okay guys that was the first uh, four challenges in D3 uh, a library that I really like and if you're into this kind of videos just please leave a comment share and subscribe thank you very much have an awesome day and see you in the next video bye